So how you doing? Hey, I'm here working on Dino Joe's Home Light 550. Uh, I wasn't going to show much of the repair work on this saw, but I figured, you know, why not make a video? Um, I was just going to basically show you the saw after it was repaired uh, because, you know, these kind of videos don't really get the views, you know, so it's kind of not worth it. But I think you guys might enjoy this one because there's some things here that uh, maybe you can pick up on and learn from. So right now we are doing a oil pump rebuild and I'm gonna go over those details, but I'm gonna show you some things with the cylinder as well. Um, we were initially talking about porting this saw, but that plan changed. We are going, not gonna port it. Uh, we're gonna leave it as factory. Um, it is a clamshell design. The bearings aren't the best. So, you know, Dino Joe and I talked about it and we're just gonna leave it as factory. And we're just gonna go to, you know, as a repair, get her back to good running condition. So that's what we're doing. But I wanna kind of show you what's going on here because this is what it's like uh, kind of behind the scenes with me. And you get a, kind of a clue of what I do off camera. So I think you'll enjoy this. Alrighty. So, yeah, here's parts of Tyler Joe's Home Light 550. You see, we got her completely disassembled at this point. Uh, and I got some instructions here. And this is oil pump. We're working on the oil pump right now. But we'll get into that in a minute. Because this is kind of interesting here. I want to show you something here with the cylinder. Um, but I thought that something was interesting here with the cylinder that you guys might enjoy looking at. So as you see the cylinder here, she's a clamshell. All right, nothing out of the ordinary, right? But what I want you to look at is the transfers. I want you to look at the transfers specifically. And if you look in there, you can see where fuel was flowing through the transfer and where it wasn't. You know, the clean parts are where it was actually flowing through and and all that stuff. And I know a lot of guys like the port and stuff. And, you know, I thought maybe this would help you make some decisions because whenever you can actually see where it actually flows through and makes contact, uh, maybe that kind of give you a clue to where you might be able to make improvements in the flow. You know, maybe make it a little more efficient because it is not utilizing every amount of space in there you know what i mean so whenever you're doing a port job maybe you could look at that and help you give you a clue of what you want to do you know what i mean we aren't going to do any port work to this saw but i thought you guys would be interested in seeing this you know you can see where the flu the, the fuel actually actually ran through and where it didn't and if you can do things to actually utilize every amount of space in there, then you potentially are providing for additional flow. Correct? That's the way I would look I at it. I think the mistake is overcompensating sometimes. Uh, and sometimes when you overcompensate, you, you end up hurting things. But sometimes, you know, just a little tweak here and there at just the right spots do make improvements now what do you say we go on with this and uh let me show you what's up with this oil pump that way any of you who are working when you're home light 550 you can kind of see what's going on and you know there's other saws that have this similar type of oil pump so yeah now this is the diagram of how everything gets assembled. So this is an oil pump repair kit. This is a, this is a diagram. Um, I managed to obtain three of these kits and two of them are complete. One of them is missing one of these gaskets. So that's the only thing missing out of one of them is one of those gaskets. And that could easily be made and turn that kit into a good viable kit. So. Yeah, we are working on installing one of these oil pump kits to fix this saw. So 
this is where it all goes, is in here. That's how the oil system works. So if you look at this hole, this is actually impulse. Uh, it comes from in the crankcase right there. So it fires impulse through here. And if you look at it, so there's the, the you get the first gasket here. So you, you get the first gasket here. Then you got the diaphragm assembly that goes on there. And then the other gasket goes on top. And what happens is the impulse comes in on top. And then whenever it pressurizes, it pushes the piston in to pump oil. You see it? Right there. Pretty much how she works. But the issue we were having is that oil was getting into the crankcase and oil was literally spewing everywhere on the saw, literally. Um, so we were having oil go through here into the crankcase and there's another hole right here. See it? Little hole, that's actually not right there. It's back in here. There's another hole back in here, which comes from the little hole right down there. You see it? So we were getting oil out of there too. Um, this thing was literally just pumping oil everywhere you can imagine. So we're rebuilding the kit and we're resealing everything. Um, but I want to show you something here. So there is this ball check valve right here. And you can see it on the diagram. Well, this spring here, this spring was missing. For some reason, there was no spring in here. Uh, I wouldn't have known that if I wasn't looking at the diagram. I would have never thought that. But yeah, that is a little check valve right there. The spring pushes the ball up into the piston. Then it basically allows the oil to flow one direction. So, so the oil would flow out through this hole, come up through here, back down this hole, down a channel, and out here at your oiler. That's the, how the oil flows. But it also has a manual oiler. So the manual oiler functions off of this guy here and basically bypasses the whole system to push more oil out. It's pretty interesting how this works, huh? But you see this little guy? I did get that, but for some reason I didn't have the spring. So I started figuring out a way to make one. This is my first attempt. And it wasn't until I had it done that I realized the ball is too big for the spring. It just slides up in. So, I went with this spring, whatever. So I went with the, this spring here. This is a metering lever spring. I'm gonna try that. I think it'll work as a check valve. At least I hope so. So it seems to be the right size. It seems to be about the right spring tension and everything. So I'm hoping that spring will work as a check valve for this. And it also has this other spring that goes right here and it act, helps to activate the, uh, it helps to push the diaphragm out. So this, this spring pushes the diaphragm out and then the crankcase pressure pushes the diaphragm in that act, actuates the piston. So you've got one spring constantly pushing out and then the crankcase pressure pushes it in to get it pumping. But that's how it works. This is the original diaphragm setup. And you can see she's a nasty mess. Um, you can see all the gaskets there for that one, but this side here, only uh, like a small portion of this gasket was even here. Um, most of it was was, miss was missing. So, you know, we were definitely having some oil system issues, and that's probably one of the reasons. Which is why we're going with a whole new kit. Now, she also comes with these two O-rings, which, if you're working on it, they don't get included in these parts here. Those two O-rings go up here at the manual oiler. You pull that apart and you replace those two O-rings. But yeah, this kit will replace all your parts except that little ball and that little spring. So if you're ever working on this oil pump system, here I'm gonna give you a good shot of the diagram. That's how everything goes together. And the kit comes with all those little pieces, except that spring and ball. So, yeah. 
Um, there you go. Little video on how she works. And hopefully we can get this thing together and up and running correctly. Uh, this whole thing here, this whole piece here, everything was full of sawdust and I had to clean it all out. She was completely jammed full of sawdust. So we got her cleaned up and I'm getting ready to, to assemble it. So I figured I better make this video before I start assembling. So there you go. Uh, just a quick little video on the Home Light 550 oil system. Um, you know, if you ever have any issues with yours, uh, you got, got oil spraying out everywhere or whatever, maybe you got a better idea where to look. Especially if you're getting like uh, bar oil into the crankcase, now you know where it's probably coming from, huh? So yeah, but I'm gonna be taking at this saw a little bit here and there. Uh, probably gonna take a few days yet until I get her all together. But you know, we're one step further along. Um, I'm just working on it a little bit at a time here in the evenings. I'm not going after it all at one shot, you know what I mean? I am working on a plan for the uh, Husqvarna 372X Torque. I, I think I got an idea of what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna order some parts. Uh, probably gonna go ahead and get bearings and everything for the bottom end, seals, all that stuff. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and order the 48 millimeter top end for that saw. And I think we're gonna drop it down in size and build it that way. Uh, it's very common for people to go big bore on every on them and everything. So, uh, and I think for me, more practical reasons is to go smaller. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go smaller on it. And I'm thinking about enlisting some assistance to help on that build. So we, uh, we're going to come up with a plan here. But first, I'm going to get some parts in and see how she goes. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this probably boring video. And we'll catch you on the next one. Later.